okay so before starting this video i want to tell you that in a video titled seed doesn't start from main i was not able to explain the concept in depth and uh, recently i came across to this article it explains all the details about how the main function is called so please check it out if you are curious about it and now let's dive into today's video okay so we all know how the process image gets created in memory and uh, what is the memory layout of a program today we'll try to take a deeper look at the arrangement of stack for a program we will see why we use stack what is uh, the stack frame and uh, how the stack is used to implement the function call uh, but uh, uh, before that uh, uh, let me talk about the function call in a program means uh, why we need them what are the benefits that a function provides to a programmer and all that so uh, from the programmer's point of view function gives a modular approach to write a program functions allows the reusability of code and that is how the library function came into existence functions uh, also uh, allows us to write a program with an abstractions abstraction in the sense you don't need to know how the particular function works internally to use them for example printf and scanf probably most of us really don't know the implementation of these functions uh, but we use them quite a lot so uh, these are the benefits uh, that a function provides to a programmer in summary we can say that the function makes it easier for a programmer to develop to do the development uh, so now let's uh, see how a function call happens in any program okay so here i have written a very simple c program called stack frame dot c let me just show it to you so here this is the program and here i have written two function one is our main function and the other is solve function and the main function is calling the solve function at this line so uh, if we uh, uh, as we know any c program starts uh, from the main function the main function will be the first function to be called then the main function will call the solve function at this line uh, by passing the parameter a and b after that the main function will stop executing and it will wait for the solve function to complete then the solve function starts executing and after the completion of solve function the solve function returns control back to the main function and then the main function will continue from where it stopped previously and then it will uh, complete its execution so uh, here we can see that the function which started the execution at the last which is the solve function is the first one to be completed means it is following the last in first out policy and for this type of execution uh, the data structure which suits best to it is the stack data structure and this is the reason why we use a stack data structure to implement the function call at architecture level okay so now we know how the function calls happen in any program now uh, uh, we can also see that in any function call there are two functions involved one is uh, the calling function and uh, uh, the other is called function and uh, whenever the calling function calls the called function it passes some parameters to it and then the solve function then the called function starts executing and at the end of uh, the called function uh, generally it returns some value to the calling function so uh, here in this passing of uh, argument and uh, returning of value from the called function we can think of it as a communication between these two function and uh, this communication is also handled by the stack only and uh, one more thing to note here is that uh, this uh, passing of argument to the call function can be done either uh, uh, by value or by reference uh, for example printf 
printf pass the argument by value while in scanf we pass the argument by reference where we want to store the user given input so this is all uh, about the function call and uh, what we needed uh, to implement the function call now let's see all of these in action with the help of uh, gdb so what we will be doing is we will uh, compile this code make it executable and then we'll uh, uh, analyze this code with the help of gdb we will see how the function calls happen uh, at the memory level so let me uh, first uh, compile this code Uh, here this option m preferred stack boundary will tell the compiler to reduce the stack alignment so generally what happen is whenever we compile any program uh, the compiler uh, aligns the stack in such a way that uh, uh, the executable can be executed very efficiently on cpu but uh, for now we are reducing the stack alignment so uh, it just makes us makes it easy for us to analyze the stack now uh, we also have to provide the option m32 and option g and then our source file and name of output file okay so it has created a 32 bit executable here now let me open it in gdb okay so we have opened this file in gdb let me just uh, uh, list out the uh, program here okay so this is our program and here at line number 12 we are calling the solve function so before uh, starting the execution uh, let's uh, make a breakpoint at uh, line number 12 so we can analyze how the function call will happen so okay so now let me run it so it started started the execution of the program and uh, it uh, stops uh, just before the function call now if we disassemble the main uh, we can see that we are just before the function call uh, here and here what uh, uh, this push statement is doing is that uh, here uh, in uh, while calling the function we are passing some argument to the function and this push statement is just doing that it is uh, just passing these two argument a and b to the solve function and see how we are uh, doing that we are just pushing this value on the stack and uh, after the call to the solve function the solve function will access those value from uh, stack so this is how we are uh, uh, communicating with a called function now uh, here one more thing we can do is uh, we can see the information about the current stack frame let me uh, just print the stack value also so we can analyze it okay so here uh, we can see that the previous uh, instruction pointer is 7e46 and it is stored at location d0fc which is uh, this location and uh, uh, the previous uh, frame uh, frame pointer that is stored at location d0ft that is uh, here and after that uh, means after uh, this uh, saved instruction pointer and saved frame pointer we have uh, uh, the stack alignment uh, that we have uh, uh, given at time uh, at time of compilation that is two so these are just uh, aligning the stack and then here we have the locals of uh, this function so if we do info locals uh, we can see that uh, the the locals of the main function are a b and c and if we print uh, uh, the address of this uh, local variable let me just print it so here we can see that the variable a is at location d0 f0 
which is uh, uh, this location so this is our a this is b and this is c so this is the stack position at this time now let me uh, uh, just uh, execute these two post statement which is posting the argument a and b on the stack so let me just uh, do this uh, execute this next two instruction okay so now we are at uh, uh, this line call to the solve function and now if we see the stack uh, we can see that the value a and b has been pushed onto the stack in reverse order so whenever the solve function try to access this value of a and b uh, the solve function can access it by uh, accessing the lower memory address first and then the higher memory address so it can access a first and then b now let's execute the next instruction so the next instruction is the call to the solve function so what uh, this call instruction will do is uh, it will first push the next instruction address on the stack and then it will point the instruction pointer to the start of the called function so let's uh, just see how it will going to do that oh i have to do single instruction execution okay okay so now if we see the stack we can see that the uh, top of the stack has the value uh, 561e4 that is the uh, address of the next instruction after the call and now if we uh, do the info register we can see that the instruction pointer that is EIP is at location 5619 which is nothing but the start of the solve function okay so now we are inside the solve function now we will see how uh, how the stack frame is created and destroyed for any function so right now the top of the stack has the value 161e4 now let's see what uh, these statements will do with stack so here we can see that first uh, uh, instruction is the push ebp what it will do is it will uh, push the previous uh, frame pointer uh, that is uh, uh, here so it will push address of uh, this location onto the stack and then here we have the instruction move ESP to EBP so what it will do is it will just point the uh, stack pointer to the uh, saved frame pointer so let's just do that and see it in action okay. so let me just uh, execute these two instruction and now we will uh, if we will see the stack we can see that the stack has the value d0 ft and what d0 ft contain is that it has the previous frame pointer value so right now at this location the previous frame pointer value exists and if we do info register uh, we can see that the stack pointer that is esp is pointing now at this location now let's execute the next instruction which is uh, just uh, subtracting the 4 byte from ESP so what it is doing is it is just creating the space for the local variable of uh, this function and if you have remember uh, in solve function we have only one local variable uh, that is C and it is of type integer and this is the reason why we are subtracting 4 bytes uh, uh, we are creating 4 bytes of space for it so let's uh, just uh, execute this instruction and if we see the stack we can see that the stack has been moved uh, up by 4 byte and uh, here uh, now uh, if we do info frame uh, we can see that the ebp is at this location d0 d8 which is uh, here and uh, the stack pointer is uh, at uh, location d0 d4 and this area between this frame pointer register and the stack pointer register is uh, called as the stack frame of any function and stack what the stack frame of any function contains is the locals of that function and so here uh, this is the local of our solve function and 
uh, this area is the stack frame of this function now let's see what uh, uh, we have in program so till now we have uh, created the stack frame now uh, at the time of return means uh, from here we will destroy this stack frame that we have created for this function so let me just uh, uh, execute uh, uh, till this instruction so we will put uh, a breakpoint here and then we will continue the execution okay so now we are returning from the solve function and now we are currently at this live instruction so what this live instruction will do is uh, just a reverse of the creation of the stack frame so at the creation of the stack frame what we have done is we have pushed the value of ebp on the stack and then we move the stack pointer to it so at this time what this live instruction will do is it will first move the ebp value into esp and then it will pop out the top of the stack in the ebp and this is how we are going to restore the uh, previous stack frame so right now if we see this stack uh, we can see that right now on this stack we have uh, uh, our local variable c and here we have the previous frame pointer now let's execute the live instruction and now if we see the stack we can see that here we have the uh, address of the saved instruction pointer that is the address of the instruction after the uh, call statement means uh, this address okay so right now we have the inst address of the instruction here and uh, here in solve function we have uh, only one instruction left that is return instruction and what this return instruction will do it will just pop out this value and it will uh, uh, save this value into the instruction pointer so uh, let me let's execute it so 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 we have executed this uh, return instruction and now we are back to the previous function that is our main function and if we see the info register we can see that the instruction pointer is pointing at this location 61E4. So if we disassemble the main, we can see that the instruction pointer is pointing at this location. And now if we continue the execution, the main will continue and it will complete its execution. Okay, so now we know how any function call happens and function gets executed at memory level. One more thing to note here is that uh, in solve function here we have created the stack frame before the execution of the function and after the execution of the function we have destroyed the stack frame. So this instruction before the function execution is called as function prologue and uh, this instruction after the function gets uh, completely executed is called as function epilogue. Okay, so that is all i have for you today i hope you have learned something and it will help you in your journey and that's it see you soon in the next one